Welcome back everyone to more NASCAR Heat 4 at Knee Pit Gaming. Today's setup video takes us to Las Vegas Motor Speedway and while it is a mile and a half track like a few others that we've done to this point, Las Vegas races very differently to me than a lot of the other mile and a half tracks for a couple of reasons. Number one, the two ends of the track, turns one and two versus turns three and four, race differently to me. Not quite as extreme as what we saw at Texas, but still they race very differently and the feel is very different between turns one and two, which has a lot of bumps versus three and four, which has not quite as many bumps. So a very different feel there. And also you can run the high side at Las Vegas as a primary groove. It is a lot easier to run higher on the track since you can avoid some of the bumps and just have a general wider radius through the corner. So I like the variety there. And I also like any time that you can have a viable groove up higher on the track. As always, we'll be talking about the cup cars as well as Xfinity, as well as trucks. So let's get to it. One of the big changes for the physics in NASCAR Heat 4 is the addition of tire wear. Now tire wear is going to have a huge effect on the setup that you're running. So it makes sense that we need to, before we get into setup discussion, talk a little bit about the options that I use while I'm testing for these setups. So we'll start off in the options menu under the gameplay tab, and then we're gonna scroll down to tire wear and fuel consumption. Normally I do this on 2X. I don't like to go any higher because I do like long green flag runs, but I understand that some of you like to go all the way up to 4X. Player tire wear rate. I like more wear. I like maximum tire wear, so I generally test on more wear and less grip under the grip fall off. So keep that in mind. If you're playing with different settings, such as less wear and more grip, then that's going to change the setup that you're going to want to use in the races. So keep that in mind as we're talking about setups. What I'll try to do in each video is let you know the particular settings because I don't go for maximum tire wear at every track, just where I feel that it is appropriate. And also keep in mind on the driving tab, there is a setting that you'll need to match up for the AI. So if you want maximum tire wear, then you need to have that on both the player car and the AI car. Or if you're going for less tire wear and more grip, then change that for the AI as well. Before we jump into the setups themselves, let's first talk a little bit about the track as well as some lap times in all three of the series. The track itself can be run wide open or extremely close to it. I generally do not run it wide open. Uh, I can run it wide open, particularly in three and four. It's not as big of a deal as one and two. But what I prefer to do is lift just a little bit, maybe to about 85 or 90 percent throttle on corner entry just to settle the car down a little bit and make sure that I can run the groove I want to as opposed to trying to run uh, completely wide open and having the car bounce around a little bit more and, and having to sort of deal with what the track gives me as far as what groove I run. So I prefer to run just a, a, a bit off the throttle on entry just to settle the car. Lap times here in the cup cars, somewhere around a 30.2, which is a couple of tenths faster, uh, give or take, than the goal time they're giving you on the screen right now. 30.47 is what they're using. Uh, anything around a 30.4, 30.5 will have you starting up front and should be perfectly fine. Uh, and as I mentioned, you should, you'll probably have no trouble uh, eclipsing that number and getting into the 30.3s, 32, 30.2s, or faster particularly as you get closer and closer to wide open uh, the entire way around the track. In Xfinity, somewhere around a 30.5, 30.6, again, will have you starting either up front or very close to the front row. And then finally in the truck, somewhere around a 31.1, 31.2 will have you starting up front and is uh, pretty decent for single lap qualifying tight speed. Now let's move into uh, the first setup we're going to talk about, which is a cup car qualifying style setup. With this being more of a qualifying style setup, I only need it to be fast for one or two laps. So it's certainly going to use the tires more and drive a lot looser or freer 
than a race style setup where I need to worry more about tire management. So the primary goal of this setup is to maximize the rotation of the car through the corner so that I can stay on the gas at full throttle or as close to full throttle for the maximum amount of time. So I need the car to rotate, but I also need some stability there because if you get the car too loose, then you start scrubbing off speed and we certainly don't want that in a qualifying setup. Now we're not gonna talk a lot about adjustments here. Instead, we will look at that here in just a moment with the race style setup. But I did wanna show you guys this setup so that you can compare and contrast this one versus what I'm gonna show you in a race style setup. Moving on to the race style setup, you're gonna notice a lot of similarities with what we just saw in the qualifying setup, but there are also gonna be some very noticeable differences and those differences are to tighten up the car. Now that will take single lap or qualifying type speed out of the car, but it will make tire management much easier over a long run and allow me to change how I drive the car and manage the tires a lot better than with more of a qualifying style setup. And again, that's gonna apply more to those of you who are very aggressive like I am on the tire wear and fall off settings as opposed to someone who wanna run with more grip and less wear. If you're running with less wear and more grip in the car, then you're gonna be able to get by with running more of a qualifying style setup as opposed to uh, if you are using the other extreme, which is more wear and more fall off. So keep that in mind as always as we go through this. Starting with the shocks, 3.5 setup works great here. I certainly recommend at least once trying to uh, increase the shocks and go to something like a 10-15 setup uh, on the front, maybe at the rear as well, just to experience what that's like at Las Vegas. So I'll leave that there for you guys, uh, but I definitely recommend trying it at least once. And that will answer all your questions about what shocks do and, and how increasing or decreasing the numbers on the shocks and different corners of the car will affect it. Moving on to the weight settings, front weight is at 52, wedge is at 54. Those are the same in this case as the qualifying setup. That is not always the case for me. A lot of times when I am transitioning from a race setup to a qualifying, I will want to reduce the nose weight because it helps the car uh, to rotate a little bit better, particularly on corner entry. And since I'm trying to maintain more speed and stay in the throttle more in a qualifying setup, then I want the car to rotate a little bit easier. Same thing for wedge. I generally run a little bit less wedge in a qualifying style setup, but here, just the way uh, Vegas runs for me, I needed that extra stability both in the front weight, a little extra nose weight, and a little extra wedge here over what I would traditionally run in a qualifying setup. Moving on now to the spring settings, 1,200 pounds left front, 1,100 pounds right front. The stiffer left front than right front spring will help the car rotate on entry. If you're finding that you're, uh, you need more help on entry, one of your options in a, addition to some of the other things that we talk about, lower that right front spring some and that should help the car rotate on entry. So go down to maybe a thousand and see if that helps you out. Uh, you start getting too low with the right front and the car wants to roll over a little bit on the right front. So then you have to make some ad other adjustments to the setup so we can kind of backfire on you a little bit. So I like to stay somewhere between 900 and about 1200 on the right front spring just because it gives me a little bit more to lean on through the corner without the car uh, feeling like it's got quite as much roll in it and wanting to roll over on the right front. The rear springs, you notice here that these are uh, very different than what we just saw in the qualifying setup. They are both lower simply because I need the rear tires to last. This game is set up to get the car loose over a long run, uh, particularly if you're pushing the car hard. Now, it's entirely possible to burn the right front off of the car, but with my driving style, the right rear is always the first one to go, and that's why I drop the uh, both rear springs so that I can tighten the car up some and try to even out the tire wear between right front and right rear a little bit better, especially over that long run. 
Uh, tire settings, very much the same as what we looked at in the qualifying setup. There's plenty of adjustability here. The lower that you make the pressures overall, it tends to give the car a more stable feel, uh, feeling like you have more grip. I haven't really found a whole lot of speed uh, from either dropping the air pressure or increasing the air pressure. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So by all means, go ahead and test that out and see what works best for you. Moving on to the miscellaneous settings, plus three and minus three, just a little bit different on the left front between here and the qualifying setup. You can get by with running uh, more camber. I've tried it and it worked out just fine. It did not wear the tire uh, more than, than using less camber did. It just simply changes the balance of the car and that will certainly wear the tire more uh, or less just depending on how balanced the car is. So plus three minus three works out really well, but you can certainly use more or less camber than that. Front sway bar is at 1.315, uh, which is becoming a favorite setting of mine in NASCAR Heat 4, just simply because it provides a good balance. Now the front sway bar will determine uh, the amount of roll you get to a large extent, uh, particularly in the corner. As you're uh, working corner entry, the car with a stiffer front bar will want to uh, keep its, uh, its attitude better than if you have a smaller front bar, which will want to let the car roll more on corner entry. I prefer a stiffer front end uh, just for the feel that it gives me. So 1.315 works really well. But if you need the car to rotate more, then drop that by uh, probably one click will be enough and that will make a dramatic difference in how the car handles. Left side track bar at 10 inches, right side track bar at 10 and a half inches. And that once again is very different than what we saw in the qualifying setup. Again, the qualifying setup is all about getting the car to rotate and maximizing speed through the corners without worrying about tire wear and tire management. But in the race setup, I need to lower that so that I can once again tighten up the car and save that right rear. If you are having the opposite problem and you are burning the right front off the car rather than the right rear, then try doing things like increasing the rear springs closer to what I was showing you in the qualifying setup and also test out using more track bar, a higher track bar number closer to what we saw in the qualifying setup and see if that doesn't help you even out the wear between the, the two right side tires a little bit better. Brake bias here, really not. Uh, much of an issue. You might need to use it a little bit in traffic, but overall somewhere between 65, 70, 72 is a good range for me. You can drop that number if you want to drag the brake, use a little trail braking on corner entry uh, to free up the car. A lower number on brake bias will certainly do that for you. Uh, grill tape, once again, sadly, just doesn't mean anything to the handling of the car. So don't get too aggressive and start getting uh, warnings from the engine temperature. But other than that, uh, anywhere from about 40 to 50% generally works just fine. Wheel lock at 10 degrees, steering offset is at 0 0.05. And as I mentioned in previous videos, these are pretty standard numbers for me. The steering offset in particular is based off of the camber. If I were using camber somewhere like we used to and back in heat two and at the beginning in heat three of plus 10, minus 10 type numbers, then I would increase the steering offset. The more camber, the more steering offset that I like to use and keep the car going fairly straight on the straightaways without having to turn uh, left or right very much. So that's what I use the steering offset for. But this, like everything else, is all about feel and some people will prefer more or less. Gear settings, the 325 rear end ratio really uh, seemed to work pretty good, but there is, as always, room to adjust that, you can go 333. I don't know that 340 uh, will work simply because you'll probably run out of RPM on the straightaway, but these are things that you can try. Also try lowering this to something like a 310 um, and that will reduce your RPMs and can help to save the tires if you know how to use that using the on and off the throttle a little bit more effectively. Running fewer RPMs, you can actually stay in the throttle longer because you don't have as much engine braking uh, to deal with when you're on and off the gas. So it can make it more comfortable for some people. 
That'll take care of the cup cars, both a qualifying and a race style setup. Now let's move into a racing setup for the Xfinity cars. We're not going to spend a great deal of time in either Xfinity or trucks simply because I like to use very similar setups among all three series uh, because once I find a feel that I like, then I really like to stick with that on a particular track. So let's just spend a moment and look at a few of the differences here in the Xfinity car as opposed to what we saw in Cup. First difference would be the front weight, a little bit lower here at 51% as opposed to the 52% we saw earlier. And that is simply because uh, I find that the Xfinity car is generally a little bit tighter feeling to me. So I needed help a little bit on rotation and lowering that front weight will uh, provide that. Normally I would also look at lowering the wedge, but the more I tried that at Las Vegas, the more the car would sort of uh, become unsettled and get loose on entry, which is not something I want if I'm in traffic. So I decided to leave it at the 54% because it provides a nice amount of comfort on corner entry in particular. On the spring settings, a little bit different rear spring here, 500 and 550 as opposed to some of the 400 type numbers that we saw in the Cup Series. A little stiffer spring here, just like the front weight, I needed the car to rotate a little bit more through the corner in order to maintain speed. And because this car is a little bit slower and a little easier on tires for me, then it worked out just fine. However, if you find that you're burning the right rear off the car, just like with the cup cars, you'll want to reduce the rear springs. Try something like a 400 and a 450, or even shrink the difference between the left rear and the right rear a little bit more to something like maybe 400 and 420 or 430, and that will help to preserve that right rear. On the other hand, if you find that the right front is the one that you're burning off, then you can try increasing the rear tires. That will help the car to rotate more and should balance out the wear. But if you are too aggressive on entry, a lot of times that is the easiest way to burn a right front off the car is get too aggressive on entry. You start sliding the front tires um, as you go up the track on entry and that will really kill the right front tire, particularly if you're using the more aggressive wear and fall off settings. Tire settings, very much uh, the same as what we were looking at in Cup. Miscellaneous settings overall, very similar with the exception of the track bar. Once again, a little bit higher track bar here, uh, closer to what we were actually looking at in the qualifying setup for Cup. But once again, this just helps the car to rotate. Going back to our discussion uh, just a moment ago about trying to save the right rear tire, uh, and we were talking about lowering both of the rear springs or adjusting the split in the rear springs. Well, the same thing applies here to the track bar. If you find that you're getting uh, too loose and you're burning the right rear off over a long run, then reduce the track bar. Uh, particularly, I find the right side track bar because generally whenever you're burning the right rear off, it's because you're getting loose on exit and lowering the right side track bar will certainly help with that. Brake bias, grill tape, all of those things are very much like we talked about with the Cup car. Coming down to the gear settings, you can see that instead of the 325 gear we saw in Cup, 333, again, this car is a little bit slower, so I wanted to keep the RPMs up there a little bit more. But as always, you have some more adjustability there. Uh, and using a, a little bit more RPM, like maybe going to a 340 or something, can really help you over a long run if you're using aggressive uh, tire wear settings simply because your lap times are going to fall off so much and this will keep your RPMs up a little higher over the long run. So that'll take care of Xfinity. Let's finally move over to the trucks. The trucks and the Xfinity cars are very close in the way they handle and drive for me and that's why generally the trucks and Xfinity cars are very similar or even the same in how I set them up. Uh, sometimes at certain tracks where uh, the reduced speed of the trucks versus Xfinity becomes an issue and requires some setup adjustments. But overall, they feel very similar at a lot of tracks. And you'll notice that in the setup. So we're not gonna spend a lot of time uh, going through the truck setup. We've already done that in Cup and Xfinity. So that's gonna do it for today. Thank you very much for joining me and stay tuned as we will continue our support for NASCAR Heat 4.